I'm Isaac Ben Ezra, host and co-producer of Conversations. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Ha happy St. Patrick's Day to you, Isaac. I have a real Irishman with me. His name is David Sullivan from the land of? From the land of East Hampton, but my grandparents were from County Kerry in uh, Ireland. It, it's good to see you again. Congratulations on your election as uh, the district attorney for Hampshire and Franklin County. I know the, the, the office is going to be in good hands, and I'm excited about the things that you're already projected. We just came back from a luncheon at the Amherst Club, and Dave had a chance to talk a little bit about uh, what he's got cooking in terms of turning that uh, district attorney office into a people's office. So you want to tell us about that. Well, let's, let's not leave St. Patrick's Day, though. I like what you said to the people earlier. Well, we were talking about St. Patrick's Day, and you know, uh, it's a time to remember uh, Irish heritage, but I think it's a great day to remember all heritages, and particularly uh, citizenship, and how we need to stay welcoming toward our immigrant uh, community, and uh, our nation was founded on immigrants, and uh, it's my belief that if we could make St. Patrick's Day the National Immigration Day, it would be wonderful, so that uh, no matter uh, where people's nationalities were, we could all celebrate together. Uh, the wonderful uh, gift that uh, uh, the immigrant community gives to America, and particularly our communities here in uh, uh, the Pioneer Valley. You know, folks, uh, Dave is not new to the community. He spent several years as a uh, register of probate. Yep. And uh, then decided to make the run for district attorney recently. Why did you decide to run? What well, was to make a difference in the community? Uh, there's a lot of ways you can make a difference in the community, and for a district attorney's office, uh, it, number one is uh, about making um, our community safe, and uh, uh, whether it be in the schools or on the streets, uh, for senior citizens to uh, feel that they are safe, uh, but also um, to do the great prevention work that a district attorney's office can affect uh, to prevent crime in the community. So um, that's one of the reasons. The other is uh, to make sure our justice system uh, was going to be responsive and accessible to all the citizens of the Northwestern District, which is all of Hampshire County, Franklin County, and the town of Athol. So I was really excited to you know, bring some great ideas to the office. And right now we're about 70 days into the administration, and we've been able to assemble just a great team of prosecutors and staff and people that really care about justice in the community and want to make sure that um, whether it be a victim or a witness, um, law enforcement, uh, or an offender, that everybody gets the right justice that they deserve. How do you make the connection with the community, and what are those programs? Well, the number one thing uh, with connecting with the community is to make sure that you have people that are working in the community. Uh, so we have prosecutors uh, that are working with law enforcement directly. Uh, they're going to be giving lectures. They're going to be talking to community groups, as well as myself. Um, to make sure that uh, we have roundtables that talk about the real key issues in our uh, district. Uh, we have silent epidemics of domestic violence. We had over 1,600 cases that we prosecuted last year. Uh, we have uh, child abuse uh, uh, that's rampant in the district. We're the third highest rate of child abuse in the Commonwealth uh, in our district. And elder abuse is uh, up statewide over the last three years, about 160%. So it's really uh, making sure our team gets out there, educates the public about what the issues are, but also um, that we're problem solvers, that our prosecutors and our team looks at these issues, whether it be child abuse, elder abuse, uh, substance abuse, and we say, geez, how can we work with community partners uh, to make sure that these problems are addressed, not only just the immediate need of uh, prosecution, but the long-term prevention strategies that are going to make a difference in the community. There are two parallel the goals. One is those who believe in prevention and want to see prevention as a way of enforcing the law and protecting the public. And the other is the rights of the uh, people who've been victimized. You want to talk about that? Well, I, you know, the, the paramount um, goal of a district at attorney's office is to prosecute cases uh, fairly and to make sure that justice is done uh, for the victims of crime. And, uh, um, and that's very important. Um, that victims not only um, you know, are cared for in our system, we make sure that, uh, that they get restitution if it's a property crime uh, or you know, uh, medical costs, whatever it may be. But also, um, the long-term goal is to make sure that 
our victim witness advocates, our prosecutors, our team of uh, staff uh, work on the healing process that we help uh, victims uh, heal from uh, the injuries uh, that might have occurred because of a crime. It could be that your house was broken into and you've lost your uh, sense of, uh, of peace and a, a sense of security in your home. It could be that somebody was a victim of rape or an assault. And you know, how do we as a team of uh, uh, prosecutors and uh, victim witness advocates make sure that that person uh, receives the justice that they deserve? So Do people fall point. through the uh, loopholes, or is there a connection with human services and other agencies? Well, we, we make referrals to a lot of social service agencies, and, and that's one of the great parts about Massachusetts is a whole victim bill of rights where victims have the right to be heard, they have uh, the right to be present during court hearings, and also um, our team of uh, victim witness advocates uh, knows what these services are so that they can be refer victims can be referred to the right uh, agency uh, to receive the help that they need. And then on the uh, prevention side, um, I believe it's a moral uh, duty of every prosecutor um, to not only prosecute crime but to prevent it. Um, you know, uh, the ideal world would be that uh, in 10 years we wouldn't be prosecuting crime or we'd be prosecuting half the crime that, that happens today. So taking those proactive strategies toward prevention is really important to me and to our office. Do you see the connection between rising unemployment and, and foreclosures and the kinds of issues that you're now facing in a larger, to a larger extent than even before? I think we definitely have seen it already with the uh, elder uh, financial expectation. Uh, people that are strapped for money taking advantage of elders, uh, whether that elder knows that person as uh, a member of the family or you know, somebody from the community exploiting them. Um, it's definitely uh, had an impact uh, in that area. Um, we see a, a rise in domestic uh, violence. Um, I don't uh, attribute everything to the stress uh, of finances and um, substance abuse, but it's certainly a combination of things that have, have triggered uh, that rise. So uh, the failing economy and, and the stress in people's lives, and uh, both financial and um, personal, I think uh, affects the, the crime rate. We're also looking at a tremendous uh, uh, situation with uh, domestic violence. I mean, our office prosecutes an enormous amount of domestic violence, and, and the rise in domestic violence uh, certainly um, I would attribute to the uh, economic uh, conditions uh, in many communities and homes. So tell us about your staff. You, you, you had a big job. You came in. You, had to, you offered the people who were there the opportunity to continue and you brought on additional people. You want to talk about that? Sure. Um, you know, we had an open... And what's going to be different than the last administration? Um, well, we had an open door toward every uh, employee that was there um, was uh, welcome to apply, and uh, we probably had about, uh, yeah, I would say, 90% of the staff and attorneys reapply. Uh, we kept a majority of the, the staff and prosecutors. Uh, where we made the fundamental changes uh, uh, we're in the leadership positions, so uh, we have a new uh, chief of our child abuse unit, um, Linda Pisano, who's a resident of Amherst, uh, a very experienced uh, child abuse, uh, child protection advocate. She worked in the Northwestern District Attorney's Office uh, many years ago as a chief and a tremendous amount of experience and passion for children and protecting children. Uh, so we've been able to have her on our team. Uh, we have a new juvenile justice chief. Uh, very experienced uh, woman uh, who was the chief of the Hamden District Attorney's Office for their juvenile unit, and uh, that's Yvonne Pesci. She's from Ware, uh, grew up, uh, you know, in a rural community, but understands uh, that juvenile justice is uh, about rehabilitation, about uh, being proactive and, and changing behaviors of juveniles so they don't become lifelong offenders. Um, we have a tremendous first assistant. He's a trial attorney who came from uh, Bristol County District Attorney's Office and uh, brings a wealth of trial experience, but also um, rooted in uh, social justice. Uh, who is he, that? Uh, his name's Steve Gagney, okay. and uh, he's a, a, a young prosecutor, went to Holy Cross, and uh, just has a tremendous amount of experience. And our deputy district attorney is Jan Healy. Uh, Jan's from Conway, and. Uh, uh, she was the chief of the Western Mass Division of the uh, Attorney General's Office uh, and a former public defender and private attorney. So, so Jan brings a lot of vision and, and leadership when it comes to uh, a safe neighborhood. She was part of a, a really tremendous safe neighborhood initiative uh, both in Springfield and actually up in uh, Orange uh, where that's part of our district. 
So um, we've had uh, those people on board. Uh, we have a chief uh, legal counsel, um, trial counsel. Uh, his name's Jeremy Bucci. He grew up in Irving, Mass., and was the uh, chief of the narcotics uh, uh, division of the Suffolk uh, Superior Court. Uh, staff uh, or district court staff and uh, so he's uh, moved back from Boston where he was working and he's uh, uh, living in the community that uh, he grew up in and really wants to make a difference uh, and he's in charge of our uh, narcotics uh, prosecution and prevention so those are just some of the leaders that we're able to bring in um, and I think the the idea and also uh, Rosemary Tarantino is the uh, chief of our district court where probably about 80 percent of our cases come in and Rosemary uh, for, worked in the DA's office at Northwestern uh, many years ago, but had been in the Attorney General's office, and, uh, and she's a, a resident of Williamsburg. So we tried to get as many local uh, uh, attorneys with uh, diverse talents to be able to really make the team uh, effective and also have that diversity of experience that would really uh, make an impact uh, for the office and for the community. And how's the relationship with the, uh, the, the office of uh, other attorneys, they they come in, they defend. The rela what is the relationship like? Oh, between the prosecutors yes. and uh, the defense bar, yes. it's very strong. I mean, I was a former defense attorney and president of the bar association, uh, and it's uh, it's collegial and it needs to be uh, because uh, we're going to have our differences, but uh, ultimately. Uh, each of uh, those groups, our group and, and the, the private bar or uh, defense bar, uh, needs to respect the law and uh, respect the process. So uh, we've got a healthy relationship. Every prosecutor that I hire has to have uh, a good relationship with the defense bar and needs to be respected by the defense bar for the work that they do. They aren't always happy with you know, uh, the, the stands that we take, but as long as we treat them fairly, we treat them respectfully, I, I think, uh, it uh, produces a much better result in the end. And how about the public defenders? You want to tell us about that? Well, we have a tremendous group of bar advocates, which are the private uh, public defenders, so to, be, so to speak, uh, and also the public defenders that are hired through the Committee for Public Policy Service. And uh, they're experienced criminal uh, defense attorneys. They do a tremendous job. And they hold our feet to the fire to make sure that we're doing everything correctly and uh, that due process uh, occurs for their clients. So um, we've got a good relationship with them, I believe. One other thing that comes to mind, and you spoke about it earlier at the Amherst Club, and that's the relationship that the district attorney's office has with the uh, various town uh, police departments and probably the, some of the education that needs to take place on a regular basis. I want to talk about that. Well, our office uh, works hand in hand with all law enforcement in the district, uh, and that means uh, state police uh, with the uh, uh, federal uh, law enforcement agencies. And very critical is uh, local law enforcement that we're there uh, to uh, make sure that we give the right education to them about uh, you know what needs to be prosecuted, uh, how how we're going to prosecute cases. And our goal in the office is to do extensive trainings with law enforcement to to support the mission that. You know, um, we're going to keep our community safe, but, but at the same time, we're going to make sure that everybody's rights uh, and liberties are, are protected. So it's a real healthy relationship. In the first 70 days, I've made it a point for myself and for our team of prosecutors uh, and staff to get out, meet with the local law enforcement, so we find out what the needs are in the community. You know, for example, in Amherst, um, tremendous um, number of breaking and enterings last year, um, and we want to be a partner in helping to, to solve those uh, break-ins so that the community not only isn't victimized in the future, but I think for people to get their peace of mind uh, that they can uh, be safe at night uh, without worrying about somebody breaking into their home. You talked earlier about the uh, guardian of the rights of the people. <clears throat> so that has a lot to do with how, how people are approached to begin with when they come in contact with uh, 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 any law enforcement. Uh, on any issues, I want to talk about that. Are we, uh, are we, do we have a, a county that, where the police have been trained and respect the rights of each individual? Well, I think that um, uh, local law enforcement receives training, um, and there can never be enough training about the diversity in the community. Uh, you know how to approach 
uh, people. Um, it's an ongoing process. Um, it's making sure that we remind everybody that um, that citizens um, are um, in a community. They have certain rights and responsibilities, and police also have certain rights and responsibilities. And you know, making sure that uh, uh, everyone's respected and uh, that police uh, use the proper amount of authority and force when they're arresting people and also investigating crimes. So, um, you know, our office is going to be a partner in making sure that, uh, that there is proper training and that we uh, make sure that uh, whether it be um, an accused in court or a citizen walking the street that those rights are protected. The floor is yours. I'm sure there are some, you might have some things that you want to touch on. I know you, you've introduced some of the projects that are coming uh, into the community that uh, you're partnering with. You want to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, part of our office <coughs> uh, goal is to strengthen the, um, the programs that we have there already. Uh, we're involved in um, anti-bullying and uh, you know, cyber-bullying uh, prevention. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that uh, we have safe schools. Uh, you know, the number one goal of every parent is to make sure that their child goes to a healthy, vibrant, and safe school. And uh, we're going to work with the school communities um, through our community outreach and education to make sure that that goal happens. Uh, we want safe neighborhoods. We're, we're going to continue to work on neighborhood uh, watches, have our prosecutors available uh, to go out into the communities and to make sure that if a neighborhood wants a watch with their local law enforcement that we help them out. Um, we want to make sure that they're safe homes and that's safe for elders uh, against scams, uh, against being victimized uh, through elder abuse. Um, for child abuse prevention, uh, we've really um, you know, made that uh, a very important priority in our first 70 days. Uh, we've added an extra prosecutor uh, just for that uh, purpose alone to make sure that we uh, review and we uh, investigate and we prosecute uh, cases uh, in a timely way to protect children. So um, a number of the initiatives are kind of below the radar screen, uh, but we want to make sure people know that uh, we're going to really work for the uh, most vulnerable uh, people in our society. Those are the folks that uh, are victimized and don't have a voice, so they depend on our office and, uh, and our team of prosecutors to be their voice for justice. So how do you how do you use your staff to guarantee that uh, those programs uh, reach the right people and uh, are brought into the communities? Well, you know, part of it is that um, uh, I have a belief, uh, having been a, a manager and uh, a public servant, is that you delegate responsibility. And, uh, and our prosecutors have welcomed that to not only be prosecutors but also be community prosecutors uh, and to be proactive in, um, in these uh, type of initiatives. So. For example, in child abuse, our child abuse uh, prosecutors are involved uh, with the Northwestern Child Advocacy Center to make sure uh, that that uh, facility that was established in Northampton and, and part of an overall goal of child abuse prevention are very involved in that. Um, for elder abuse, uh, we have uh, a prosecutor that's just designated for elder abuse and for disability abuse cases. Her name's Jamie Parent, and she's a lifelong resident of Northampton. And having uh, people specialize and pe make priorities of certain issues really gets them out into the community. That way they become part of uh, you know, uh, community group uh, discussions about that. So, and we're going to use uh, uh, the facilities here and uh, throughout the district to make sure that uh, we communicate what the needs are uh, you know, for the public uh, when it comes to uh, um, you know, crime problems or issues that are uh, coming up in the public. Um, one of my uh, biggest goals, and we're uh, working toward it in the next two months, is to make sure that every community um, has a prosecutor designated to it uh, through our community prosecution program, and that uh, we're making sure that the cases get handled from beginning to end by the same prosecutor. So if you're a victim of crime, you're not going to talk to multiple prosecutors and multiple victim witness uh, advocates. You're going to have a, um, a continuity that uh, that makes the case that much stronger and, and victims feel uh, more um, empowered uh, through that particular person that uh, will handle their case from beginning to end. So it's a fundamental shift. It's pretty common sense, but it hasn't been happening, and I want to make sure that that happens uh, uh, in our office, that uh, that single prosecutor is able to uh, really effectively prosecute that case and take care of that victim. 
our, our community over the years, has, and I include myself as somebody who's new, relatively new, I've only been here 15 years, but uh, diversity is something that uh, we, we talk about not only in terms of talk, but action too, because the, the fundamental issue for a diverse community is learning to appreciate each other and understand each other. And this is particularly important in the area of uh, uh, dealing with not only the district attorney's office, but uh, the police departments. What kind of work are you doing in that area as a district attorney? Well, and, uh, do you have a diverse bilingual community? Well, we're, we're really w working on that. You know, we uh, recently hired our IT uh, coordinator who's bilingual and that we really want to make a goal of having as many people bilingual. Uh, even more so is to make sure that uh, we have our community outreach and education reaching different diverse groups in the community. That could be uh, uh, the LBGT community, it could be the Latino community, um, it's the Asian community, it's um, faith-based communities, to make sure that, um, that we get out and we educate people about what these issues are or what issues they have in particular. Um, you know, there could be, for example, an ethnic group that really, uh, uh, particularly maybe uh, uh, women, that don't feel comfortable coming forward and talking about domestic violence or uh, about uh, child abuse. So we want to work in those communities so that they feel comfortable uh, approaching us or approaching law enforcement uh, to to uh, to report crime and also to be part of uh, any solutions toward uh, those kind of issues. So uh, the diversity um, is really about getting out into the community, you know, looking at what the diversity is in the community and letting them know about all the services that we provide for uh, for victims and for prevention services. So um, uh, y you can't uh, be effective if you're just sitting in your office. And I think you know we've had the triad program that works with seniors and safety issues for quite a number of years, and, and that program uh, is uh, really important to um, giving seniors in the community information um, about crime and about crime prevention. So we're gonna continue with senior citizen education, but in a much diverse di district like this, we wanna make sure that we really get out there and do the outreach efforts. And, uh, I would say within a month we should be able to um, have a new director of community outreach and education that's going to have that as a primary focus. We're in the heart of uh, UMass and with that comes not only the great opportunities to relate to young people, uh, that is the elders in the community, but also some of the issues. I think it's kind of central uh, to look at safety uh, from the perspective of that you have a stake in the community. And so often, so many students don't have that stake. They come, they go to school, they're on campus, but there isn't that same connection of uh, commitment to the community. I think the, com the community has to do a lot more to welcome students. So I'm not putting it on the back of students. But it would be great to see the, some, some program where the community gets together with students in terms of welcoming them to the community in many, so many ways, whether it's to open up our homes and have a dinner on a Friday night with kids that are coming from out of town. But so many of the issues where, where there is some hostility in the community has to do with the, the separation, the alienation, Want to deal with that? Well, I, I want to compliment the Amherst community. Uh, last year, uh, different neighborhoods around UMass opened up their yards to uh, to uh, meet and greets, and uh, it was very effective. Uh, it really uh, put a face uh, to students. So you know, as they're going to and fro uh, downtown, for example, you know about the noise, about uh, alcohol. Uh, consumption about throwing uh, cans onto uh, lawns, whatever it may be, about the quality of life. Um, I think when they make that connection, it's great. So you know, I know around UMass that uh, that was started at least last year, and I think that needs to continue. Um, you know, I, my question I always ask students is, would you do this in your parents' neighborhood? And most of them would say no. So uh, I'm going to work with uh, with UMass and the new students program. Uh, to really, from the very beginning, let them know that uh, 
uh, that we take um, uh, those antisocial behaviors, you know, which I consider noise at one o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, alcohol consumption, uh, all the things that um, you don't want for your parents and you don't want for your younger you know, brothers and sisters to hear or see um, that it's no different in the Amherst community. And you always have to remember, 99% of all the students that go to UMass and Amherst and Hampshire, you know, South, you know, Mount Holyoke Smith, um, they're good people. And uh, many of the troubles uh, that happen are from a small minority, and many times it's the guests of um, the UMass or other colleges, communities that cause these troubles. So uh, it's not only educating um, the students about the quality of life and welcoming them and let them know that, uh, that they're welcomed and, and uh, the expectation is that they're going to be a full citizen, and that means respecting everybody's uh, you know, quiet enjoyment. Um, but that their guests are expected to have the same. So it's really holding it to a, to a high standard. So I'm willing to work with any of the colleges here in the five college areas to make sure um, that they know that those standards are high. And, and there's serious crime that happens. I mean, there's sexual assaults, um, there's breaking and enterings, um, you know, there's uh, drug distribution. Um, and the more cooperation that students um, can give law enforcement, give our office, uh, the safer uh, their student community will be. So. Uh, but I think uh, uh, the Amherst community has been very welcoming over the years, and I, I think uh, you know, it's those meet and greets, and, and I'm happy to be part of them, and our staff, I'm sure, will be part of them as well. So, uh, you know, stepping off on the right foot through uh, new students' programs and through those meet and greets will go a long way to letting people know that uh, they're very welcome, and, uh, but the expectation is that they're going to have uh, good behavior, you know, while they're uh, involved in the the, not only the college community, but the greater community. Well, Dave, it's been good to have you. Yeah. Uh, I, know, I know we're excited about the prospect of all these different programs and reaching out. And I think parents who send their kids to UMass or the local colleges uh, deem it very important to know that it's, it's not only a safe community, but uh, that the uh, the, the powers that be take uh, uh, the, the level of activity, the kinds of activity uh, that are appropriate seriously. Yeah, and it's about the safety of the fellow students, you know, to make sure that uh, parents know that they're sending their children off to school and that they're going to, you know, be safe. And, uh, you know, it's working on, uh, you know, uh, those issues of drug and alcohol abuse and, you know, also mental health services, things like that that are very important. Uh, you know, to students as they make their way through, uh, you know, college and that they're safe uh, and uh, that we do everything we can to make sure it's a good experience for everybody. And then I'm going to put in a plug that we're, we're doing a, um, a program, our prescription take-back program. We're going to take back uh, a lot of prescription uh, medications uh, throughout Hampshire and Franklin counties. We'll post this. Yeah, it'll be great. And that's April 30th, uh, 10 to 2, and it's going to be at the Wildwood School in Amherst and other towns around the area. So we really uh, want to make sure we take uh, the prescription medications out of the pipeline, so to speak. And that's not only for the safety of kids and for people who might abuse uh, prescription medications, but also our local water supplies that they don't get in there from being flushed uh, into our uh, water, screen, water stream. So. And that's a real important issue because so many of us have drugs that are no longer usable and they usually get dumped and there's an awareness that it's going to wind up in the ground somewhere and that that could be dangerous or it's going to wind up in the water system and and there's already indications that's that that's happening so i think that's a terrific service and we'll have it on our pc psa's yeah, it's, it's a way about uh, protecting yeah. uh, not only kids but adults uh you know and also to protect our environment so it's a so it'll be uh, Saturday, April 30th, uh, 10 to 2. Uh, and throughout that's at the, the Wildwood School. They're right at the Wildwood School, and they, all they have to do is bring their prescription medications with the bottle, everything intact, just bring it along. We, we're not going to take any sharps or liquids, but those uh, pills that have uh, been sitting around for years that you, you need to get rid of uh, is important. You know. We'll keep posting that. That's a great idea. David. Thank you, Isaac. It's great to be here, it's and it'll be great coming back. And uh, just let me know uh, anything that you need. And uh, you know, as long as the people of Amherst and the Northwestern District know that uh, we're the People's Law Office, and uh, we're here to serve them and to make sure justice is done every day.
And by the way, if your wife is ready to renew her vows, you know I'm now a justice of the peace. I'm well, I'm open for business. Boy, you're for peace and love now, aren't you? Yeah, so my card is going to say, make love, not war. <laughs> that's, that's great. Well, listen, I can't think of anybody better to marry someone. So. Take care, Dave. All right.